In this video, we'll talk about RF pulses and excitation case space. Let's start with a simple picture of how slice selective RF pulses work. You have a slice at a particular location with a particular slice thickness that you want to excite. In the presence of a gradient G in the slice select direction, space is mapped linearly into frequency space, and the gradient represents the slope of that mapping. This mapping tells you what band of frequencies must be excited and therefore something about the required frequency content of the RF pulse. Now since the frequency content of an RF pulse is given by the Fourier transform of the time domain RF waveform itself, this suggests that the slice profile is closely related to the Fourier transform of the RF pulse. So let's work our way towards this expected conclusion in some detail. First of all, since most RF pulses are short compared to both T1 and T2, we'll ignore relaxation effects altogether, and we'll simply look at the response of magnetization to a B1 waveform in the presence of a simultaneous gradient waveform. The block equation without relaxation says that the derivative of the magnetization is gamma m cross b. In the rotating frame, it expands to this, which basically says that the gradient field, which modulates only bz, rotates transverse magnetization about the z-axis, while the B1 field, which lies in the transverse plane, rotates magnetization between Z and transverse components. Now for any RF pulse, this equation can be integrated numerically to calculate the response to the pulse, but the analysis of most RF pulses can be simplified greatly using an approximation called the small tip angle approximation. In this approximation, the RF pulse tips magnetization away from the positive Z axis, but the tip angle is assumed to be small, such that the remaining M sub Z is approximately unchanged. With this approximation, we replace M sub Z with M0, and these terms become irrelevant. Using complex notation for transverse magnetization and B1, we then have this simplified block equation. We see that the first term rotates bits of M0 into the transverse plane, generating transverse magnetization, and the second term rotates the transverse magnetization according to the local gradient field. The transverse magnetization generated in a time interval dt at a time t is gamma M0 times B1 times dt. And the eye shows that an RF pulse along x rotates magnetization towards y and vice versa. Once generated, that transverse magnetization rotates under the gradient field, and at some later time capital T, the total rotation is given by the integral of the gradient field from when it was generated to time capital T. These two observations allow us to write down the solution to the simplified block equation directly. At time capital T, we have a total transverse magnetization that is the integral of the first term, and each bit of transverse magnetization has been rotated by this term. Now if we define excitation case space as the time integral of g over an interval ending at time capital T, then we arrive at an expression for the transverse magnetization that looks a bit like a Fourier transform of B1, but not quite. In the Fourier transform, the complex exponential contains the product of two conjugate variables, as we have here, but the function to be transformed must be a function of one of those variables, and the integral is over that same variable. So recall that k is the time integral of the gradients, which means that dk dt equals gamma g, or dt equals dk over gamma g. Substituting this in, we have an integral over k, and the integration is over all k-space locations that were visited by the trajectory prior to time capital T. And this, then, is proportional to the Fourier transform of b1 over g. The g in the denominator is a scaling factor that captures the fact that the higher the gradient, the faster the travel across k-space, and the lower the deposition of energy at a particular location in k-space. The absolute value operator reflects the fact that g is a scaling factor for velocity in k-space, but the mathematical details of this part of the derivation are omitted here. Note that if g is constant, which is the case for most slice-selective RF pulses, mxy simplifies to the Fourier transform of the RF pulse itself, as we suspected at the beginning. One aspect of pulse sequence design that can be understood easily by looking carefully at the definition of excitation case space is the necessity for refocusing pulses. Since k is defined as the integral of the gradient up to a particular point in time, the end point of the trajectory defines the center of excitation case space. If we look at a simple slice selective pulse and look at the distribution of energy in excitation case space at the end of the RF pulse, we see that the energy is not centered in case space. Now if we add a refocusing gradient that places the center of the RF pulse at the same location in k-space as the end of the gradient, then at that point the excitation is centered in k-space as desired. The excitation k-space formalism also provides a flexible way to evaluate many transforms that can be applied to pulses. For example, suppose this pulse provides the desired slice profile, but the required peak B1 amplitude is larger than the RF hardware can produce. What we can do is to truncate the pulse at this level, and if we stretch the truncated segment to produce the same pulse area, and at the same time scale the gradient so that the quantity b1 over g as a function of k is preserved, then the slice profile will also be preserved. And finally, a quick look at how well the small tip angle approximation holds for larger flip angles. For flip angles up to around 30 degrees, the small tip angle approximation is nearly perfect. Here the red line shows the Fourier transform of the pulse, 
while the blue line shows the full block equation simulation. And even at 90 degrees, which is obviously not a small angle, the small time angle approximation is remarkably accurate. The real part of the block simulated response follows the Fourier transform of the pulse very closely but a small imaginary component appears as well. Note that the small tip angle framework works not only for slice selection in one dimension, but is valid in any number of dimensions and can be used to design multidimensionally selective pulses.